it going guys MMA professor new setting it's a beautiful day out we're gonna do this from outside UFC 116 predictions taking place this weekend a little late uh, it's kind of early in the morning but uh, you know uh, you gotta do what you gotta do uh, let's start undercard first fight John Matson against uh, Carlos Famola I think that's his first name I don't know I'm doing this outside. Don't don't have my computer ready. So uh Yeah, so let's let's go over this. Uh Vimola, I've seen a couple of his fights. Uh he's a brawler and just tries to outmuscle people. He likes to come in winging right and left hands like this. Presses people against the cage, uses brute strength and no technique to pick them up and take them down. And then he swings wildly at their head until the ref either jumps in or he takes their back and, with no hooks, just tries to squeeze their head off their shoulders. Uh, John Madsen, uh, Division II national champion wrestler. Uh, he's been training with Brock Lesnar, I think, for, uh, for this camp. So uh, how I see it going, no idea. Uh, Vimola, it's, with heavyweights, it's hard to tell sometimes. How good they actually are when they're beating up uh, no names. Madsen does have UFC experience. Uh, he's fought some decent guys. Mustafa El Turk, weird fight, he, but uh, that he kept on the feet the entire time. But I'm gonna go with John Madsen first round TKO. I think uh, Mole's gonna come in, uh, try to just wing wild punches, uh, try to take him down, you wear out his gas tank. Uh, just completely gas. Madsen's going to take him down with relative ease, hit him with some huge elbows, and end the fight. Late first round TKO, John Madsen, but I could be entirely wrong on that. Like I said, it's hard to tell. Uh, I just, Vimola hasn't impressed me uh, in the fights that I've seen. Uh, Forrest Pets against Daniel Roberts. Uh, Pets taking this on semi short notice uh, back to the UFC. He did all right his first run in the UFC. Uh, it's a tough one to call. I'm going to go with Daniel Roberts by submission. I think, uh, you know, Pets has, has been susceptible to grapplers in the past, and he's kind of a, a mediocre, decently well-rounded, but uh, Roberts was fairly impressive before he got his world fucked up by uh, Gerald Harris. Uh, speaking of Gerald Harris, Gerald Harris against Dave Branch. That's what we call a transition right there. Um Good luck finding footage on Dave Branch. Uh, from everything I've heard, he's a fantastic grappler. Uh, trains at Henzo Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, so he's got very good uh, submissions. He's fought once in uh, Bellator Fighting Championships. I think that was the last fight, won by submission in the second round. I'm going to go with Jared, Gerald Harris to win by TKO in this fight. Um, Branch may have the grappling credentials, but Harris has the... Uh, intangible in this one which is the ability to keep this fight where he wants and I think he's going to want to keep it on this on the feet Harris hits very hard and uh, I think uh, eventually it's going to catch up it might look a little like the Mario Miranda fight um, except for you know Miranda is that a good a grappler but he had the ability he had the wrestling ability to try and take it down and he couldn't even get it there so Gerald Harris late first early second round TKO Kendall Grove against Goran Raliak. This fight relegated to the undercard because Grove made some stupid comments about the Ultimate Fighter, and you know that's what happens. I would have loved to see this fight uh, because I have no idea how this fight's going to go. Both guys are pretty similar. Neither guy has the wrestling ability to really put this down. Um, the one thing for me is that uh, you know Grove was he couldn't finish. Um, he couldn't finish Munoz in the last fight, and uh, I don't think he's going to be able to finish Raliak, which, you know, the problem with Grove is his chin sometimes is susceptible, and just like in the Grove fight, he gets hit a couple times, and, you know, he just kind of freezes up. And um, uh, Raliak doesn't really have that much power, so it's I think it's going to be a close fight. I think it's going to go to a decision. I'm going to go with Raliak by decision, although I, I think it's going to be a very, very close fight. Um uh, Relic just maybe winning by with leg kicks or something like that. I don't know. This is, gonna, this is a very, very tough fight to call. Um, so let's go to the Spike TV portion. 
of the undercard. Seth Petrozelli making his UFC return against uh, Ricardo Romero. For those of you who don't know, Ricardo Mar- Romero is from New Jersey, trains at AMA Fight Club with Jim Miller, uh, Dan Miller, um, Charlie Brenneman. And uh, those guys are also affiliated with Henzo Gracie. They train there as well. They do some cross-training there. Romero is an excellent grappler, very good, well-rounded, um, decent striker, pretty good striker, actually, um, from what I've seen. And Petrozelli has always been that guy that uh, grapplers, you give him a lot of trouble. Um, he has looked better as of late, uh, becoming more well-rounded. Uh, but the, the thing in this fight is Petrozelli doesn't have that dynamic striking or power striking to keep Romero at a distance. And if Romero is smart, which I, he is, um, he's going to get this fight to the ground, use the striking, get inside, um, take Petrozelli down, and work his jiu-jitsu. So I'm going to go with Ricardo and Romero. Uh, second round submission, uh, possibly a rear naked choke or an arm bar or something like that. Um, so there you go. Uh, Brandon Schaub against Chris Tersher. Tersher, you know, he's trains with Lesnar, trains with huge wrestlers. Um, so you'd figure that would be his advantage in this one. Uh, but he's wildly mediocre everywhere, including the wrestling. Not that outstanding of a wrestler that I think he's going to put Schaub into any danger. Uh, I think Schaub's going to tee off on him early and often. And uh, Tersher is a tough guy, so he may be able to last for longer, but I'm going to go with Schaub. Second round TKO, um, just because he's a tough guy. I would pick first round TKO, but uh, Tersher is a tough guy. I mean, he took the hardest nut shot that I've ever seen anybody take ever, and he was willing to stay in the fight. So uh, there you go. 